Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari A to Z Flashback, a series of short playthroughs of the 150 games that make up Atari Flashback Classics for Nintendo Switch. Today's game is Liberator. This was a 1982 release from Atari, designed to coincide with the DC Comics publication of Atari Force, which ran between 1982 and 1986. Liberator features a few uh, cameo appearances from characters who appeared in the comic, and likewise there was a sort of prequel story to the game Liberator, uh, published as part of the comics. So supposedly this game had a pretty limited run in arcades uh, back in its original time period, but it's become a bit more well-known more recently thanks to various compilations and re-releases and such like, as well as the efforts of the video game archiving community, of course. Um, internally, the system used very similar hardware to the Atari 8-bit and Atari 5200 consoles. So it ran on a 6502 microprocessor, uh, and it had two pokey chips uh, driving the sound effects. So the Atari 8-bit and the Atari 5200 only had one, this had two, so twice as good. Um, yeah, so this game is often described as the opposite of Missile Command, um, and you'll see why when we come to play it. So, let's go play Liberator. Okay, here we are with Liberator. The galaxy has been invaded by the evil Malaglon army. Commander Champion of the Atari Force has chosen you to become the Liberator. The people of the universe are depending on you to free them from their evil masters. Two credits. Okay, let's begin. So, in this game, um, you can pick between several levels. Start at level 1, 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, 19, 22, or, uh, that's it. <laughs> Let's start at 1. Message from Commander Champion. Warning! Long-range scanners detect enemy scouts in your sector. So we begin with this sequence here. Where you have to blast the enemy scouts. This is mostly about scoring points rather than survival. I don't think you can die in this sequence. And then you reach the planets. And your aim in this bit is to blow up the missile bases. And you achieve that through the use of the four ships in the corner of the screen. Now, um, unlike a conventional shoot 'em up, you don't aim directly. Oh no! Oh, that was terrible. I'm trying to explain things, and that just doesn't work, does it? Next bonus ship at 20,000 points. That's not going to happen, is it? Uh, anyway, as I was saying, unlike a conventional shoot 'em up, you're not just blasting straight at um, the enemy ships. Like in Missile Command, you have to kind of lead your shot somewhat, because the thing that actually destroys them is the explosion, rather than the shot itself. And so in order to take out those missile bases and the missiles that are coming towards you, you've got to fire ahead of where they are, anticipate where they're going to be, and leave an explosion waiting for them. Now, to help even the odds a bit, you do also have these shields. Uh, so each ship has several shields, but they will eventually run out. They're not an infinite resource, so... Uh oh. Oh, we are dead. And you'll also notice that uh, if you leave the missile bases on the ground too long, um, the uh, which are the red flashing dots, they turn into those satellites and then attack you. So, all right, let's have another go at that because that was, that was, frankly, terrible. So, uh, let's begin from the start again. Oh, no, wrong button. I know I can do better than this. I do really like this game, actually. I actually... I know Missile Command is a more well-established classic, but I actually think I like this a bit more than Missile Command. It's just a little bit more varied and interesting to me. Uh, it is pretty damn challenging, though, as you can probably see. So, arguably even more so than Missile Command. It's about prioritising your targets... And making sure you do your best not to get hit where it hurts. But that's better, isn't it? I'd lose two of my lives on the first level. Okay, 
say, Commander Champion suggests that you should try and deal with the missile silos first. There's one, that prevents more missiles coming towards you, and two, that also prevents them launching themselves into the sky as satellites as well. Oh, I lost a life somewhere. Don't know where that happened. That sort of pweep noise you hear is um, the sound you get a bit like in Missile Command, where you're trying to fire from something that isn't able to fire. Oh no! Oh, you can't block that, which is very harsh. Yeah, so like me attempting to fire from a location where I don't have a ship. Sets off that noise there. I think it's also to do with the number of shots you have on screen at once as well. As you'll notice. Oh, these are nasty because they, they're sort of fragmentation bombs that will split into bits like that. So you need to try and destroy those before they split open. The missile command is pretty frantic, but I, I think this is... This, ooh, it's all over. Yeah, I think this is even more frantic than missile command. Just because you're, you're not just looking for things coming from the top of the screen. You're having to kind of focus on all angles at once. All right, let's go again. This is only a, only a short game, so we'll have, a, we'll have a few goes at this. And the nice thing, if Missile Command kind of frustrated you a bit, is you, you can you can get away with rapid firing in this. Because you're, you're not limited on how much ammunition you've got. And in some respects, you, you're probably actually better off rapid firing. Because it makes you more able to cover a wide area. And take out your targets. I don't know, I'm doing pretty poorly with that so far. I'm actually genuinely impressed with the effects on the planet in this game. I think it's very convincing. And as I said in the intro, considering that this is um, effectively running on a slightly souped-up Atari 8-bit computer or Atari 5200 uh, console, Entirely plausible that that effect could have been created on home hardware of the time as well. And in fact, I'm pretty sure I've seen some demo scene releases that have made use of an effect like this. If you've watched my uh, Atari A to Z series that focuses on Atari 8-bit games, then uh, you may well have seen uh, the video on the game Yoop, for example, which makes use of a very convincing 3D effect. Uh, in that case, on a tunnel rather than a rotating sphere like this, but it's a similar kind of principle. So, providing a sort of... Oh, dear. Providing a sort of smooth scrolling effect and the illusion of three dimensions. No, don't kill me. Oh, it's all gone wrong. Rubbish. Absolute rubbish. All right, one more go. Let's... No, let's start from the beginning again, because I'm just going to embarrass myself if I go any higher than what we're starting with here. So yeah, this is obviously a pretty challenging game. Uh, or I'm just rubbish, or a bit of both. Probably both. But that gives it plenty, plenty of longevity. So it catered to those people who would go to the arcades and want to show off their skills and attain high scores and that sort of thing. But it also makes it work really well as a home game as well. I mean, it gives you lots of um, opportunity to, to improve your skills and progress. So you can, you can clearly see how you'd progress in this game because you'd make it to higher stages, you'd get higher scores, you'd get larger bonus multipliers. And you'd see more messages from Commander Champion. Oh. 
That was a quick wave. Yeah, if you can if you can take out the missile bases pretty quickly, then you can actually finish the level surprisingly speedily. So as long as you just pay careful attention to where the enemies are and make sure you destroy the really dangerous things like the saucers and the um, the bases that have launched. Yeah, you can make good progress. And although my efforts here might have made it look like it's quite difficult to attain a high score, uh, you'll notice that the score multiplier is going up by one with every level. So the longer you survive in the game, the further you get, the, the higher the score you're going to get. And the, the speed at which you acquire score will increase as you progress through the game. So... So it's one of those games where you, you don't get a little bit better at once, you get you make progress and you get a lot better all, all of a sudden. What else is there? Is there something else? There's another missile base. Oh, I see. So if you destroy those from the front, then it takes out the fragments of shrapnel that they throw at you. Whereas if you take them out from the back, it will fire those out towards you. See, we're on to level 5 now and we've got a, um, a 5 time... Whoops! A five times score multiplier, which is making it much easier to rack up those points. Of course, you still have to survive to actually get those points in the first place. But our score is going up faster and faster with each passing level. get another bonus ship at 20,000 points which we should be able to get relatively easily there we are there's a bonus ship for us but it looks like we don't actually get to acquire that until the following level I guess no 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 none of that I like that not all the missiles will necessarily hit you so obviously those ones did, but if you um Next planet launches deadly fireballs, hit four times to destroy. Uh, yeah, so so some of the missiles will fly at you and they will um just sail straight past you. And so that's part of the target prioritization you need to pay attention to. You need to decide if an incoming missile is actually a threat or not. And act accordingly. Oh no, deadly fireballs. Oh, they slow down with each time you hit them, so that's good. Oh no, I'm dead. I'm not dead. No, and yes, I am definitely dead now. Yeah, so those beams from the flying saucers, those are definitely um, insta kills. So you have to kill him before the sound cue keeps going off. And I got an achievement for that. That's exciting. Wonderful. Okay, so let's leave that there for now, though. I think that's a that's a that's a solid effort to uh, to leave off my attempts at topping the high score table there. So I'll just say, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please help out the channel by leaving a like or a comment and subscribing. New episodes of Atari A to Z are on Tuesdays and Atari ST A to Z on Thursdays. Check out Atari A to Z .wordpress.com for a full archive. Do please also check out my other projects, MoeGamer.net, where I explore Japanese and Japanese inspired games from yesterday and today, and VideoPackGames.wordpress.com, which aims to catalogue the small but well formed library of the Philips G7000 Video Pack computer, also known as the Magnavox Odyssey 2. You can also support my work on Patreon or buy me a coffee. You can find links to do both down in the video description. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.